Okay, so we had a meeting yesterday with a friend of ours. Yes. And uh, we noticed the vibe between us sort of changed a little bit. Um, to have a third person there, specifically a, a woman. So we talked about this, and then our friend, uh, you know, who goes unnamed for the moment, suggested that we discuss, you know, in our podcast, what happens when, you know, a, a woman enters male space, this kind of, uh, let's say, rambunctious, a little bit, edgy masculine space and then a woman comes in and then we tend to behave a little bit differently or some of us do and some of us don't and what's what's going on there why is that and well we have to tone down our misogynistic horny content and be more polite towards women that's what it is <laughs> yeah we can't have so many dick we can't talk about our dicks you know in the same way we have to sort of, sh we have to be polite. We have to be uh, careful. There's a sort of carefulness. I, I find like you have to be careful, uh, more careful when a woman's around. Well, I think we should add to the introduction that, you know, the Parallax family is growing uh, and uh, there will be, you know, a female partner joining the Parallax team basically now which mm -hmm. is, you know, supposed to um, level out, I think that's what you're referring to, you know, the overtly male energy of Parallax and, and speak to a, a different part of audience and a different part of the human brain and a different part of human interests. Mm -hmm. and, so, um, and so because like Parallax is such a, you know, like from the appearance and the choice of topic, it's such a male-oriented endeavor at this point. Um, you know, our conversations are very masculine and male-centric, and so we have to, we have to, because we were looking. I mean, for for you know a female counterpart for for such a long time, and now it kind of manifests, and so that implies that we change. You know, not only the way how we. Uh, um, present ourselves but also the way we we communicate within mm -hmm. you know between us two and and you know with her basically and so that poses some unique challenges and I'm very open for those challenges because I feel like we need we need uh you know like a female perspective and you know to level us out and to get to the next stage basically do you mind, uh, Tom, if I make a, a slight critique of what you just said? Go ahead. You you sound like a politician a little bit, like you're trying to be very polite in, in how you're presenting this. Oh, I, I, yeah, I mean, sure, but I mean, it came it came from I, the, you know, I I didn't read a script or so. I I just f felt that I had to introduce. Uh, uh, the the theme of the topic a little bit better. So, but yeah, you're right. It's uh, so me and you kind of when we talk, we we kind of we kind of fool around. We're, we're very playful with each other. Yeah, um, these times are over now. Sometimes we insult each other. <laughs> sometimes we, you know, we get in these little, yeah. you know, we experiment. Uh, we're extremely experimental, and even in our meetings. We we talk we we're very let's say lateral in our conversations. We go in many 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 directions and we explore many themes and and we sometimes just talk shit with each other and that's how we come up with ideas, right? Sure. Not not with not in a sort of constructed you know organized uh, kind of way. Um, so anyway, I found out that the the meeting with our with our mystery a new uh, third e uh, element of of parallax. It was it was different and that it was organized and it was clear and it was like we we had to cover this topic and this topic and and um, there was a sort of a structure that there wasn't usually there in our meetings. Um, not that we're incapable of of being structured, but but I think there's something about you know male sperm. It just goes in every direction and it you know it doesn't really know what its target is and it's just there's so many sperms and they're just flying everywhere and they're just looking for that you know that center and so we 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 experiment we fail we 
we get an enormous erection, um, we feel something, and then, you know, most of the time we fail. Uh, and it seems like I was thinking that the, the, the way, the, the adding a woman in the, in the, in the, in the picture uh, sort of adds another dimension to reality of groundedness or something. Does that make sense? Well, let me translate that in more political correct. Are you gonna, here you go. Here you're gonna. You're gonna. You're gonna clean me up here. You're gonna make me sound. Yeah, I make. I make you. I make you an, an honest boy. So no, um, what I hear and what I feel is, and what I noticed yesterday in the talk. So <laughs> I know this mystery woman for at least 10, 12 years, right? And you know, we worked over the years in, in lots of projects. I published a book of hers, and we did like lots of stuff. But and you know her also for like seven. Six, mm. seven years, I guess. Um, but you know, the point is that she is like, like, like a highly sophisticated uh, pro in terms of marketing and in terms of you know how to deal with people, psychologist and whatnot. And and so th this is just another you know different way of um, game that we have to play now. And the interesting thing is, you know, because you. Uh, you and I, we have like a certain way of talking with each other, as you say. Uh, but I saw yesterday a side of you that, you know, um, that that I rarely see because we're just jesting and 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 doing it like you say. But you, I mean, you you are you are a teacher at the science po. You are highly pro, pro. You are pro too, and so you have like this way of uh, interacting and going with her. You know, very, very particular and professional that I don't usually see in our conversation because we are way more playful. And so it, it's not just that, um, you know, that that we're like highly experimental, but it's like this is just one side of conversations that we in, indulge in. But you can you have a different side to, to your uh, personality as well. And that's quite interesting. You know, because it's like you showed with her a completely uh, uh, different side, which I found interesting, right? Yeah, like, that's interesting too. Well, I think that if there's a woman in in the in the mix, some other part of my brain turns on. Um, it, it's not just that I'm more careful about what I say. Uh, it's the, there's a performative aspect that turns on as well, right? Uh, and and um, you know we don't really want to admit this, but you want to impress, right? You know, uh, on some level, you want you want this person to think that you're a you know, valuable man or something like that. I think that's very primordial. Um, and, and it could be, it could, it could go two ways. You could become the sneaky fucker, you know, and just try to sort of flatter the, the, the woman, you know, to liking you and then, becoming like her or or you 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 can also take risks with 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 a woman in the room and and it's just a, it's another kind of uh dynamic you know and I, i've spent a lot of time in, in men's groups and in men's groups what happens is people feel really good in men's groups because because they can just be themselves whereas if they're in the office with a lot of women around they they tend to they tend to go into that performative mode or or they tend to get competitive with each other or they tend to you know uh they tend to deny their their edgy maleness and become sort of you know slick and all these kind of things and so 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 in men's groups men really enjoy just being able to let it all kind of hang out emotionally and you know and all that sort of thing and whereas um Whereas again, what when you when there's there's more of a there's a there's a there's a dynamic and there's a spark when a woman enters the the theater and enters the room and and uh, you know whether we whether it's you know you don't want to, you don't necessarily want it to be that way because I guess in our culture we just think oh yeah we're just ourselves all the time but that's really bullshit you know because we're all, as you say often with your performativism we're we're, oh, we're always um, performing for each other on some level. Well, I didn't say that. 
I didn't. You you said perform performings. I what I meant was, you know, what I saw was, you know, that uh, you have the ability to switch modes and uh, you, you know you and 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 show like a, a, an absolute professional. Like you you could you could go into you know some comité or some you know com uh, committee. I mean, or like some. Uh, uh, um, you you know what the educated form is of behaving in a more you know professional settings. That's what I mean. And normally it's, it has nothing to do with you know women being present. It's just like being a pro, you know. And normally when we jest in this podcast, you know, we are not forced to to do that uh, because we're just playing. But mm. it was kind of refreshing to to have you know this more professional sides like coming from from you too and to manifest. There and I found that I found that great, you know. So, you get what I'm oh, saying? It was well, not so it, much. As, it was not so much as performing. It was like, oh no, he. Uh, so so, uh, he, she and you, you um, you you you're like, what is the proper word for this? I'm I'm looking for this for five minutes now. Um, um, It's just, it's just, you know, like professional behavior. That's what I mean. Well, I don't. I'm not saying that performative is is inauthentic necessarily. It's just another kind of attention, uh, right? It's just you turning on another kind of attention, which I might not turn on with with uh, with other people. Or you, you say it's not because there's a woman present. Well, I don't think we can deny that. But maybe it's just that the world is present. You know. Uh, you know, and woman is, you know, in the, in the tarot card, uh, the, you know, you have this picture of woman and the woman is the world, right? So once the world is present, then then you're, you have to, um, in some sense, well, I, I get, it, I don't, I, every, you know, all the world's a stage. So we're always, we're always putting on a certain aspect of ourselves in relationship to other people. So so there's the women and man thing, and then there's just different types of people, and we're different people in in different contexts. So uh, it's like this idea that we're not individuals; we're individuals. You know, uh, you know, we have our, our different kinds of our personality appear in different contexts. So there maybe there was the fact that there was three of us in the room that changed the the dynamic a little bit. The fact that right. she was a you know matriarch type woman. That changed the dynamic a little bit. I mean, if it had been a, a young, hot 17-year-old, <laughs> that might have changed the dynamic a little bit. <laughs> right. I'm being vulgar here, but you know, you know how we are, man. Yeah, but this is interesting what you say, because like in the individual that that the certain roles can only be, be fulfilled, and maybe that's the that's the overarching topic, you know, that some male roles only can be fully uh, form like formed if there is a female counterpart, right? Otherwise, we're mm -hmm. just you know we're just within us. But you need the difference in a kind of way, and and you know if if there's like a you know the architecture of the original tribe, there are always you know patriarchs, there are shamans, there are, you know there are kings, and then there are matriarchs, matriarchs, and mm -hmm. and they all and I like you know the description of Bart when he says you know the the shaman and the king, they lead the tribe and, and the matriarch, you know, brings it all together, basically, and holds holds the tribe together. And 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 I think, you know, and I mean, I think we're both aware of that painfully, that we were missing that from the last few years. Sorry. Fuck. I don't know why my phone just went off. You know, excuse me. Mm -hmm. Um Yeah, uh totally. Um there's there's you know, there's a way in which I think in an organization, and there's been studies about this. I, I remember hearing about different bit co companies in, in in Iceland, right? During the financial crash in Iceland, the only companies that survived in the long term were companies that had a bunch of women in them, because the women are because the women were much more. Let's say they they kept the the human be they kept the they kept the community intact. You know, and they also were more, they were more aware of risk. Um, right. So, so men are very 
into risk you know they they like they they take stupid risks all the time so they fail more often uh so so the so all the companies were sort of collapsing and, and failing because they hadn't taken account of of the very they they hadn't become anti-fragile let's say whereas the, the the companies run by or or that had women working you know very as ceos and stuff they survived because women are maybe they're 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 more they're tougher in that sense they they're not easy, as easily destroyed as as men you know or they don't but they don't go out to get destroyed either so they they hold the ground again we're certain we're talking about certain types of women too and that's another that's a whole complex yeah, we're talking not about people we're talking now about archetypes no and it's quite interesting because mm -hmm. like ar archetypally speaking it's the men who um you know challenge chaos and yeah. jump into the chaos but if when you in the moment you do that you can't at the same process the consequences of that very act for the tribe and that's normally the archetypal role of the female you know to evaluate risk take you know the risk taking you know the consequences for the tribe you know and so it's like that's the eternal motive in literature and movies that you know the woman challenges the man to you know it's like okay is is that good for the tribe are the consequences um um really worth it you know for the survival of the tribe or is it necessary that that you take the risks you know mm -hmm. for the survival and so it's like you know it's like the i think the the internal structure of the major it's like the 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 archetypal structure of the female is always you know to bring it together and and navigate and negotiate the consequences of risk taking you mm -hmm. know mm -hmm. yeah for very 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 basic reasons because you know there's this extreme protective aspect you know in, in the female psyche i think it's i think it's 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 really about protection you know um, different kind of protect protection of the inner inner world whereas men go out and protect the inner world from the outside and women protect the inner world on some level so it makes sense that that you know companies that have you know or countries that are more you know open to women being involved in in, in business and stuff like that or you know have higher gdp and things like that because because there's more of a you know a grounding and, and less there's less prone there's less let's say prone where they're less pr we're less prone to fanaticism i think i think men are prone to sort of fanaticism and um, I don't know. There's a really bad history of Nazi wives that are, you know, way more vicious and 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 you know horrible uh, than her, their male counterparts. So it's I I wouldn't I wouldn't be so sure about that. I mean, like I think females can be really horrible beings too. So oh yeah, uh, I know. I didn't. I'm not. I guess it sounds like I'm romanticizing uh, females, but but. And saying they're better it's not really that um i i know there's this famous picture of hitler and he's surrounded by all these women you know uh it's it's a it's really a striking picture because there's hitler in the center and there's all these women who are just supporting him and loving him and you know yeah, the propping, female guards propping him up and making him camps horrible yes. yeah mm. female guards in concentration camps and there's lots of stories about that but um yeah i guess my point is that that um, the the male is a projectile that goes outwards and 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 you know into it start and, and often it's often it's pushed it's propped up by the female but but it's but it's the outer projectile and um, and then the feminine is is sort of guard guarding the um, the interior uh, interior world and they could be tyrannical within the interior world certainly yeah. Um, and not there i mean of course the, again we're talking about archetypes so there's there's lots of sort of macho women and you know extremely feminine men so so it's not there's a whole spectrum of different types but uh again if we're talking about if we're talking about archetypes and matriarchs and and their function um i think i think that um i think they they ground the community on some level right yeah, I mean, it's not, it's not, we're not talking about sex and gender, we're talking about archetypes. And they're obviously, you know, females, that is women, 
that can be risk taking and everything but that's not what we're talking we're talking about you know the archetypes the the self structures within you know and so I, I would say that the masculine archetypes are more risk taking and the female archetypes uh, female techs are more protecting like you said and nourishing and caring and bringing it all together in a kind of way but you know as you know it's like every gender can take up these roles i think um mm. no well yeah i mean i was thinking about the archetype that jo uh, matthew pager talked about the Eve archetype, and then he also talked about the um, Delilah archetype. What's so, that? So the Delilah in the story of Samson and, and Delilah. Oh, Delilah, Delilah, yeah. Delilah mm -hmm. destroys, you know, Samson's power um, by by kind of lulling him into, uh, you know, uh, sleep. Um, whereas the the positive form of Eve is 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 the sleep is the restorative aspect. Uh, so so. Um, so there's there's a restorative aspect to the feminine um and there's there's but there's also a destructive aspect to the feminine you know the the devouring mother and, and that kind of thing so, so again there's there's a restorative and 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 um uh, and a nourishing and uh you know caring and all that sort of thing and then there's it's then there's the um the lulling into mechanicalness and sleep and and conformity and Right. And that kind of thing, which is the negative, uh, probably arch archetype of of the female. So there's both, and you know, and, and I guess in, in the masculine, the negative is this sort of uh, always outward projectile without any kind of repose, just going and going and going and going and trying to conquer everything, conquer every 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 part of space, right? You know, and uh, without this falling back into into the repose. And and you know Matthew Peggio was saying it's kind of like our day. We wake up with all this energy. That's masculine, you know. We wake up with this energy of doing something, and we go and do stuff, and we 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 fail or we do well or we we push forward throughout the day. But towards the evening, our minds kind of drift in, in, into into uh, and, and we need and then we need rest. We need sleep. We need repose, and that's that's and we need darkness. And that's that's the feminine nourishing quality that that. That nourishes the the um, the psyche, uh, um, which breaks apart the sort of reification in the male uh, and and, and hyper rationalism and constructive sort of projectile of the male psyche, and it sort right. of allows that to dissolve and 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 fall and and then be reborn again. Right. Uh, you know, to translate it into dating terms, I mean, it's like as men, you you need to take the step into chaos and, uh, uh, you know, and into into the danger of being rejected and approach the the girl mm -hmm. you like. Um, but the girl on her side must must kind of bring it all together. Does it fit for her? Is the guy the right guy? And so she she also she is kind of the selector, you know, and she also has she has to she has to bring it all, you know, all you know, the whole thing kind of, she has to make a home out of the whole thing. You know, does it fit, does it not fit? You know, and then and and so she needs time to figure all this thing out. And but the male can't do it because he's the impulse, you know, the, the male archetype. You know, she he has to he has to plow through and plow make through, it, yeah. Yeah, and may has to make an idiot out of himself by the myriad ways he tries to woo the girl. Um, mm -hmm. But it is the it is the it is the task of the woman to to um, to to find and to decide if she wants to open up to him or not. And so this is like a very very delicate process because she has to feel uh, into the subconscious and dark parts of her own world yeah. in order. To find a connection and so on this on a, on, a, on, a, on a superficial level it might seem vicious that she is not answering like let's say his call yeah. you know kind of ignoring him maybe but in reality she's going through all these you know subconscious processes to find out uh is that can that fit from an evolutionary viewpoint you know and so yeah so is he worthy Right. You know, yeah. Oh, yeah. Worthy of, of her. fitting you. Or, or is he? Is he? And it's very. It's often very unconscious. Like people choose each other in very unconscious ways. It's interesting. Yeah. Sometimes you see people, and they're just like, 
they're such a bad match for each other. Uh, they just haven't, they just unconsciously chosen each other for all the wrong reasons, you know, and maybe they have great sex, but everything else is a mess. Uh, you, know, you know, it's like, it's very interesting. Like what caused that, what caused that woman to open up for this, you know, guy? And, uh, you know, how, how does that happen? It's, it's often quite mysterious, and, and we think we can control it with our irrational minds. I, that's the male he wants. He's like, that's the one I want. I'm going to get it. <laughs> it doesn't work because, because there, has, there has to be a, you know, there has to, he has to deserve it. He has to merit it. He has to kind of, um, or, or not. I mean, it could be for the wrong reasons that she, she allows him in, in, into her. She opens, it could be a, for the wrong reason that the woman allows the man into her into her life it could be for destructive reasons again so uh so it's a dangerous game man <laughs> yeah but the opposite is also true i mean i don't know you certainly had the experience i think every man had the experience that and i, I think about this a lot so so you're you're let's say you're horny and uh, you're, you're you find a, a girl that you find attractive but you obviously you don't know her because you just met her yeah. And and so you're trying to woo her, and so you are like, oh, you know, you, you're in, you're in your process, let's say, of dating and wooing her, and then, but she declines you, and then you're like, oh, oh that's weird, and that's interesting, and then and then after a while, uh, you see her again with a guy, right? Yeah. And and that's a guy, and because under us males, we have we have a shortcut of understanding who another male is, right? Mm -hmm. Because we are we are like brought up, you know, it's like you need you need maybe 10 seconds to understand who, who another guy is. We will never understand who another woman is, like yeah. said that fast. Yeah, 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 yeah. But That's you have right, like, yeah. a very, like a very um, int intricate and developed and very fast way of checking out another male. And then, and the point I'm trying to make is then when she's going with another male and suddenly you have, have an epiphany and then you say, oh no, that's who you are. Because... By the choice of the male, the woman, the woman kind of shows who, who she is. And then mm. you understand why it didn't work with you and her, because she's a completely different person than you imagined. Yeah. Right? So it's well, like this epiphany, oh, oh, that's who you are. That's you you're going for that guy. That's mm -hmm. interesting. That, that's why it never worked out between us. Right? And so that's like the opposite. Yeah. But it could also be that she's choosing security instead of excitement or excitement instead of security. You know, yeah, well, yeah. there's always this like, it does, does she want this guy because he's, he's, she's, there's something about him that she's, she likes or, or is it just like, oh, this guy makes me feel safe or, you know, sure. there, there, there's so many complicated things going on there. Uh, and it's really hard, hard to see. Um, um, but yeah, yes, I've, I've, but I've often seen, uh, and, uh, but I was, I was thinking you were going to go in a different direction when you were describing that. I was thinking like, okay, I can see that this woman is, is with the wrong guy because I know men, I know this guy's a sneaky fucker and she's with the wrong guy and I can see it and she can't, <laughs> you know, right. sometimes that also happens. Yes. But that, I mean, that, so that can have, she can't really see what this, so she's, she's, because she's, uh, you know, she's Snow White, she's open, she's just like, but she's kind of asleep at the same time, and she's going to gonna walk into this thing with this guy, and you know that this guy is a, is a, is a dick or something, right? But, but she doesn't quite see that yet. Um, and, uh, you know, that, that can happen as well. Um, so so we, have, we have very, you know, we, have to, we have to see these things on so many different levels, it seems. Yeah, the interesting thing is that, you know, it's, it's not just who a woman is, but who she wants to be, you know, when she chooses a guy. Because, like, mm -hmm. a, a guy, a, a woman uh, is with guys like she wears clothes or, like, chooses a car. It's like it's an outward projection of who she wants to become. And so, at the, uh, you know, she's like, she's like Snow White. And then she chooses a prince, let's say. But in this choosing, she, she def defines who she wants to be, right? And so it's like when she's looking at me, it's like and she declines me. It's not uh, that she sees herself in a future way that is compatible, you know, with being with, being with me. So she, she needs a male to, 
develop into her future future self in a kind of sense and mm -hmm. so that's you know and 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 so it has a lot of to do with her and her desire of growing as well you know mm -hmm. so sure 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 yeah it also depends where she's at right and what she needs you know yeah yeah like exactly if she, if she's had a lot of experiences she might know what she wants more if she hasn't had a lot of experience it's the same with us we have to find out Right, we have to find out that you know the the immediate hot girl that we want, you know, on some primal level, and then we we have if we actually manage to be with that one, which has happened to me before, and then it's just and the world has gone to hell afterwards because it's that's not exactly what what we want, but you know it's 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 it just appears it's just what we want in the moment. Um, um, it's not a it's not a long term partner always. Yeah, the interesting thing is when you're 17, right, as a male, it's sufficient that Tatiana has big tits, right? So that's sufficient for you as a selector of what you want and what you want to become. Mm -hmm. But the older you, the, you get, the more precise your uh, ideas about what a woman should be become because you understand more who you are and where you want to be. Right. And so it's like when you're like uh, in, in your 30s or 40s, it's like and, and you, you are again in the situation that you have to choose a mate. Um, it is mostly in terms of where you are and where you want to be. And so because you get older, the, the, you know, the ways in which you can grow limit yourselves. You know, it's like, OK, you can st I can still be become an engineer. And we have a, like a completely different lifestyle, but the effort and energy and years I have to put in to become an engineer and architect, it's like, that's, it's unrealistic. So where I am now has a certain set of possibilities where mm -hmm. I can go from here. And a woman that I choose has to enable these choices and these future selves of mine. And so yeah. it's like, it's, it's, so the, the window gets, uh closer you know from from one year to another and it's like it's, the big tits don't are not sufficient anymore you know <laughs> yeah you know so there, there's a very you're not a child and you're not just gonna be sucking on that thing you know for sustenance right. anymore. you, you, you yeah, want you... you want a relationship with a you know you want something more multi-dimensional <laughs> and, and also you need adult. a certain profile that fits to your uh, ideas of the future mm -hmm. you know yeah well there's a way in which uh there's no there's there there uh, there's a way in which there's a choice and the way way in which there is no choice i i, I find anyway i find I've, i haven't really chosen the the I the chosen my partners in the past they've chosen me or the that just happened it wasn't like okay that's the one it was more like she appeared and then it became clear that that was the one <laughs> does that make sense so so before choice there's something like it's it's chosen for you you think you're the one that's choosing it you think you're making a choice it's kind of an illusion it's not really your free will you know when it comes to that because those forces are that pull you together are so powerful and deep and and so it's it's not it's not when you speak about it I, i'm like yes but it's 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 sort of there's a mysterious aspect that isn't we don't really know what we're doing right i mean it's like what you said in more biblical terms you have some seeds you throw it on the ground and you try you try different different women and you you fuck around a lot but then there's one woman that takes a liking on you and sees something and makes something out of it. And suddenly you're in a relationship. Yeah. You know, I think that's what you mean. It's like you as a male, you can't decide for a relationship. It's always, you know, the woman that decides, no, we're doing this now. Um, yeah. But, yeah. But you can. She decides how deep you can go with her. You yeah. know, uh, you can go. She decides whether you know you're just you know you're just sex or you're just you know uh, you know we're just doing this for fun or whether we're, we're gonna make a family. <laughs> you know, which is she decides how deep you can or you know if you're the the appropriate person for that. Yeah. And the interesting thing is that it's not because it's not who you are in the moment. It's it's who you, as you say. It's kind of she kind of knows who you could be. I think. 
And right. That's what yeah. makes her attractive to you. Not not because you have a bunch of money in a car and you're cool and in the moment. It's like I think I think that I think a woman has a deeper sense of the time than men do. They 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 know what the person could become uh uh on some primal level, right? Whereas whereas the guy's kind of more caught up in the in the moment. Well, I mean, there's also the, the traumatic aspect, you know, so traumas have to fit together. And it's like, uh, or neurosis, it's like, you know, these things have to, in, 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 in Spanish, you say, a vinculo, you need a vinculo. Mm -hmm. It's like some unconscious hooking, um, mm -hmm. where, where one trauma feeds into the other. And it's like, if you're like a cynic about it, and if you like, take psychoanalysis uh, for granted, it's like, Dating is nothing else than a hooking up of specific neuroses and traumas, you know, where people find each other to, you know, to maybe grow out of it, you know, but, you know, dating, you know, if you strip it away from, you know, these romantic images, it's just, it's just hooking up of, 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 of pathologies, basically. And it's like, to give an example, it's like, um, I have the ability, you give me a hundred women, you know, you line them up. You know, mm -hmm. they're all like kind of, let's say they're all cut off, cut, cut out the same, you know, blonde, whatever. And and I have this eerie ability to sniff out the girl uh, who who ha has like this mental tilt uh, into craziness and, and has severe issues. I can smell that. And the strange thing is I also find distracted, <laughs> you yeah. know? And so it's like, and so you see, like, the dating has a lot, to, a lot of to do with these unconscious, unresolved issues in a kind of way, right? So w the question would be, like, why would you find such a woman attractive? I, just I told think you. it's because I think it's because such this kind of woman again disassembles you, and uh, and the, there's part of us. There's a destructive aspect to that, and there's also a dissembling of the ego, right? Right. Um, um, so that is the, the 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 kind of the feminine is, the feminine will disassemble you, and and that's uh, and that that that's a necessary process, um, and and so the the the, the femme fatale or or whatever is is extraordinarily uh, attractive because of her power of destruction, but right. so is it is it destruction of you? you know, fundamentally, and that's not so good. Or is it destruction of your false constructions, you know, your your ego, your, your um, you know, your hubris, your, uh, you know, your, your naive male kind of, uh, uh, op, you know, uh, the naive male one who is just always in the head and always mental and always kind of like, you know, uh, sees the world in, in, in very... Um, theoretical terms i mean it's super interesting what you say because what you want obviously is a female shamanoid right somebody who can deconstruct you know the false images and the falseness to in order to you know give you the chance to set it all back together in a better way you know i'm i'm you know it's like i'm always uh, con I, I'm convinced for years now that you know all these terms that we have for by being bipolar you know, when you say that woman is bipolar or, you know, she has this issue with this. I think like in, 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 in pre-modern times, you would have said, oh, no, that's that's a female priestess or whatever. You know, it's like it's like we 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 have learned to pathologize certain abilities of the female psyche mm -hmm, or like mm -hmm. of, of exactly. female archetypes to take like some male structures to deconstruct to deconstruct them and then put them enable the male to put them back together again it's like and that's what i find interested in a woman is is she if she has the ability to uh not to be like you know path, uh, you know in a, in a negative way uh deconstructive and patho what's the word for this um pathogenic but in a in a shamanoid way you know to mm. enable your experiences to 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 see the cracks in your ego structure and to rip them open yeah. to rip your heart open to to let the you know the big heart to, to let that in in a kind of way and you need mm -hmm. shamanoid females that walk the edge and that are that that live in a kind of um 
Yeah, and a kind of bipolar state and in, 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 in relationship to, to society, for example, that are able to do that. Because the normal bimbo girl from the university with the, you know, she is not able to do that. So you need you need a specific type of archetype in a woman to to allow that to happen. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and the and the shamanoid woman, I don't think she's always your wife. She might be something else, right? Because there's the wife, and then there's the lover, and then there's, you know, all kinds of things. It's it's hard, it's hard to marry the, the shamanoid uh, woman. I mean, maybe. You oh could. no, the history is full, and the literature is full of, you know, writers that tried to marry these women, and this always ended in utter disaster. Yeah, yeah, like Henry and June, or something like that. It's it's. Yep. It's uh, and it, that is the birth of them, you know. At the same time, you know, like like Henry Miller met June Miller, right? And they got married, and and uh, and uh, she, she was this ultimately desirable, powerful kind of kind of unreliable woman, right? Right. Um, and uh, and that destroyed him, which made him a great writer. <laughs> so he needed to go through that destructive process. And then perhaps later he could meet uh, someone who would be more appropriate as as a, let's say, stable attachment. Oh, what do they call it? A uh, stable attachment when you actually find a partner that you know you, you're not living in that intense stress no. of 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 you know is this person going to be faithful and and uh, and you know desire repulsion uh, intense d duality you know which is the early relationships are often like that. Yeah. And then you find it, the, the stable attachment is like, you, you know, your wife, you can just be with that person forever because you never get bored of them. But, but, um, and, uh, and, and you, 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 you end up kind of, you make a certain kind of sacrifice, but you end up having a wholesome relationship and, and children and, you know. I mean, you know, I wrote this book about this experience of mine when, yeah. you know, I kind of framed it, you know, in, in terms of this old, one of the oldest myths that we have, you know, the, the, the story of, you know, Ulysses, you know, encountering the sirens, because that's exactly what happens. You know, so you have you have you have a guy uh, that is bound to 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 a ship to, to a mast. And while all these other shipmates have earwax, a uh, wax in their ears so they, they can't hear the singing of the siren, he um, exposes him to her, to the songs of chaos. Uh, and that brings what brings him in a, uh, insight and knowledge and, and in some way enlightenment. But you know you would you never hear a story where Ulysses or Odysseus kind of marries the siren. That's impossible because it's like these are you know archetypes that don't really fit for like a normal life. But you know in order to to you know break up old structures, you know to rip the heart open. That's you know that's the archetype you need basically. You know, so yeah, totally. Oh, and that's just uh, I think that's just the most painful process you can go through in a way. It's, there's just nothing, and also the most pleasurable. It's weird, it's like a it's like an intense pleasure pain matrix that you pass through in order just to become, let's say, to become who you are, or at least to become a functional human being in the world, able to you know, uh, do your thing. Yeah, it's so interesting because like what what happened and what's so interesting, uh, interesting is the moment you get seduced because it's like you, you stand before and you don't know really what's happening, what's going to happen. And we talked about when you, mm. when you were here in Palma, we talked about this ad nauseum, you know, when we were like about this. So it's like what happens because you, you don't know what you're getting into, but the woman knows. And then she, she seduces you. And this is, mm at the same time so pleasurable and so painful you know but it is you know it is so beautiful if 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 these kinds of women open their you know their i don't even know how to describe you know their arms and they seduce you and they seduce you not only erotically but uh, but initiate you to a whole different you know worldview and a whole different ball game to the world and yeah. it's super Interesting, and then, and 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 so you and you you you're trying to get a hold of the 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 space markings, you know what what is this world I'm in now, 
and and so but she's still seducing you she's is showing you the ways of her world and it's and then she reclines and then she comes back and 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 she lures you in into this enlightened state of being for a moment you know can be three months, can be six months, can nine months, but then it's over. But then you leave her, and it's 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 a completely different. Um, you leave yeah. it as a completely different being. Yeah, you you know we talked about this, so it's yeah, and I think you leave with the, out the same kind of belief in, let's say, the ultimacy of that, <laughs> because, and that is like. Her betrayal, you know, your your earnestness, right? And her betrayal, because she can't she can't sustain your idealization of her, right? Because she's just a person, you know. So in a way, you're you're you. It's like the romantic has to be killed. Uh, you have to kill the idealization. And uh, and then when that happens, you're you're kind of free afterwards. It takes a long time, maybe to. I think you're free once once the idealization has has been sort of ha has been killed, and then you're free to have a partner or not, and kind of you know live your life and have a good life, and you don't have that 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 intensity you don't even want that intensity because it's 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 a, it's a, it's a, it's um it's a it's a trap you know it's it's the eve's trap right it's eve eve's trap right that's the positive aspect of eve is she gives you the apple and then you eat the apple and you know and then you have knowledge you're not no longer naive yeah, I mean, we we um, there's this tarot card, you know, in the Toth tarot from Crowley, where it's it's the Queen of Swords, I guess, and it's the Queen that um, holds the head of uh, of a male in his hand, mm -hmm. and I think that's the representation of, I mean, like one possible representation of of the fact that you know in these situations the woman has to kill the man, right, Be, and, and and to kill all his uh, ideals and romantic misconceptions and this conception about himself and and so by 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 this act of killing she 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 sets you free and as you say afterwards you are different you're more adult you're more mature and yeah. you know um uh, ma kills you and gives birth to you at the same time yes kind of exactly yeah. exactly yeah. Mm. yeah 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 mm, wow we really we we came a long way in this conversation from our original topic about just the effect of a matriarch woman. Well, you know, we're talking again, this is this is the experience of I think this is the experience of the first half of life in a way, you know. Uh up to 40 or 45 or something like that when you still, you know, when you're still vital male kind of like and you're still like in the game, right? You're still you're still in that kind of and then, and then, eventually, you get out of the, you're out of the game, uh, and that's the spiritual side of the life where life becomes much more. You know, it it doesn't become about the pursuit of of that. It becomes about it becomes about a deeper kind of pursuit, right? So, so, uh, so the young person plays a very different game, I think, than the the older person. It's more like, you know, it's more of a spiritual game. So maybe the fact that you know it would be difficult for us to work with a younger person you know in parallax in that way because we have to work with people who are mature and, and can play this and know this story and can therefore play the game with us so maybe i'm just trying to tie it back to what we were talking about at the oh. beginning about the matriarch entering um the mature woman entering and the mature you know and working together as a mature team right um you know in you know you can look at it in all kinds of you know there's something suspicious about people who are, you know, in power who are too young, um, who have a actual power. I find. So this is yeah. in a way. So you have to be. You have to be. You have to. You have to have gone through that particular matrix of pleasure, pleasure, plain death, rebirth, to become a sort of a man and a woman, 
and then you can work together and do mature things to, uh, with each other. Otherwise, you're you're before that you're just you're you're kind of a you're kind of the fool in the tarot. You're kind of an artist. You're kind of like fooling around. You're not really, you know, you don't you're not grounded. So, in terms of like we could look at this in terms of the life cycle of this this particular organization parallax is we start as sort of naive we start as children and then we move into our adolescence as, as parallax and then we move into a kind of um we move we move into an area where the game is a little bit more more real uh through through kind of creative destruction and and come out in a different place and then the, the matrix arrives and where, where we become sort of a, a team yeah, because it's like there, there's a there, there's a different dimensionality to it. Because like like from the outside view, um, to have a female on the let's say on the same level that is a you know that works with us, it 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 gives a signal to society that we as males um, show that we are able to be accountable and to be criticized. You know, because you and you and I, we can play this game, you know, infinitely and have fun, yeah. and 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 we hold ourselves to a certain degree accountable, but we're playing, right? Yeah. Um, but with a woman entering the game, it's like, um, you know, it's like the accountability uh, rises, you know, and there are new new um, requirements for us and to us and so and and this is the signal from an outside view that you know parallax is able to sustain that and is and is able to to project that you know that that it's not just a a game two guys plays but it's, it's not just it's a, a boys club or whatever right? yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, right it's, there's it's, a lot it's, of boys uh, clubs there, out there's there a, there's a woman there that you know um might show to points that where we have developed blind spots too. And so, and you know, that's, you know, from, from the outside uh, perspective, that's hugely important. You know, it's, it gives us credibility that a woman is here. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Yeah. And so like, and that's what I got, what you were saying, like a 17 year old Tatiana with big tits, you know, doing some marketing for us, that wouldn't cut it. Right. Uh, so that wouldn't, that wouldn't, that wouldn't work <laughs> yeah. in a kind yeah, of way. No. Um, yeah, it's interesting. I think it can go both ways. Like, uh, uh, like you're saying, like the the picture is okay. The matriarch at the back is keeping the tribe together and moving it forward, and um, uh, you know, into the unknown kind of kind of thing. And so we move together as a tribe. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, I remember. I I I know that I know that. In org organizations, it's often the women that attract the men to come, and so so it's like, um, uh, in 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 a in a in a kind of uh, uh, if you look at sort of, you know, if you look at big organizations, there's always a sort of a, a, a seduction of, of you know women bringing the men into the organization right. as well, right? So. No, what you're talking about is a is a natural process. When when there's a matriarch, then there are young boys needing orientation. That's what it is. You know, it's like uh, that's this is this is what always happens. You know, and if you want to attract, you know, new audience and new young people, it's like there's only so much that you know males can do, because what what twenty twenty five year old boys you know, looking for that, 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 that are still wrestling with their own, tra own trauma and neurosis is like a female matriarch that helps them out, you know, because they can't, I mean, it's a little bit cynic, but it is what it is, you know, so. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, this is quite a topic. <laughs> it's yeah. Quite, it's quite an interesting topic. I don't know if I have a full handle on it, but, but it's, but it's interesting. No, but of course, neither, neither you nor me, we have a full handle. That's why we're doing this whole thing, because we want to grow and we don't know what's happening on the next stage of Parallax. And that's, this is why it's so exciting, because it's like, again, we can play this game on this, on this level, like, till we're bored, but to actually enter a new, a new level, this is like, with different rules, that's what's, what's kind of exciting, mm -hmm. you know, and so we don't know what will happen. And so... 
um, I'm really I'm really happy for this for this whole development. Yeah, and it's not a contrived kind of thing. It's not like we went and searched that thing out. It just appeared at the moment. Yeah, yeah, like in relationship, what you said, it's like we were looking for it, but it's the woman that decides for a relationship. Yeah. You know, and so so she made it happen. Yeah, yeah, totally. 